so in Italy, you're allowed to confront your accuser. There's many tapes of Brina speaking publicly in court. Um, and he talks a lot about having a nuclear family, being faithful to your wife, and uh, basically was roasting Ms., um, Tommaso Buscetta because he was a, a kind of a player and multiple wives and so forth. Um, so interesting enough is, although he was a killer and massacred hundreds, not thousands of people, um, he had a moral code when it came to his home life. DiMaggio identified Rina's wife at the entrance to a complex of villas where a wealthy businessman who worked as Rina's driver was living. After that, the authorities kept an eye on that house and captured Rina at his Palermo house. I don't know, by I think uh, Provenzano made the call, but that's just me. House ...on the 15th of January, 1993. After the apprehension of Rina, a series of terror acts were authorized as a message to the group's members not to testify. On May 14th, 1993, television anchor Maurizio Costanzo, who had expressed joy at Rina's arrest, was nearly killed by a bomb while driving down a Rome street. This was the first of a sequence of explosions. This was followed by a bomb under the Florence Torre del Pucci, now, which killed five. Now, all bombings are a big deal. If one life is taken, it's a big deal, and I don't want to discount it in any way. But also in Italy, it's not like the U.S. These, these structures have been around for thousands of years, and, and aside for the loss of life, which is, again, incalculable, um, some of the artifacts, some of the architecture, some of the structure, some of the culture just was reversed in a day based off these bombings. People and badly injured more than 30 others. The mafia also damaged art galleries and churches with attacks that killed at least 10 people and injured a number of others. Giovanni Brusca, who was one of Rina's hit a piece of shit. men who personally detonated the device that murdered Falcone, was now also arrested in 1996. Rina was sentenced to 26 life sentences in prison and was placed in solitary confinement. Rina was imprisoned under the Article 41 BIS prison system, which imposes strict security restrictions on mafiosos with the goal of isolating them from conducting crimes through his organization from within prison. However, Rina's bloodthirst persisted even while he was detained. He ordered the killing of a 13-year-old boy in order to threaten his father, who was about to testify against him. Consequently, the boy's body was found strangled and dissolved in acid. After his capture, Rina's assets were completely seized, which amounted to 125 million U.S. dollars. 125 million back then. And his vast residence was purchased by the crusading anti-mafia mayor of Corleone in 1997. After that, the mansion was turned into a police station, which opened in 2015. In 1974, Salvatore Rina married Antonietta Bagarella, and the couple had four children. And I talked about the name earlier. Bagarella is another prominent mafioso family. Two sons and two daughters. Giovanni and Gio... That's who I interviewed on my left, and I believe your left as well. It's not reversed, right? Um, and uh, that's Salvo, and that's Giovanni. Seppi, his sons, were imprisoned in the same way as their father. Giovanni, 24, was condemned to life in prison that's, I think, Salvo. in Palermo in November 2001 for four murders, while Rina's youngest son, Giuseppe, was sent... I don't know, maybe it's right. The first one is Giovanni, yes, and that's uh, Salvo. Salvo is a little younger. Since to 14 years in prison on December 31, 2004 for a variety of offenses, including mafia involvement, extortion, and money laundering. Salvo did eight and a half years. He, Why Giovanni's in for life. He was discovered to have set up mafia-controlled companies on the island to hide money from protection rackets, drug trafficking, and tenders for public building projects. While in prison, Rina underwent heart surgery in mid-March 2003 and was hospitalized in Ascoli Piceno in May of the same year due to a heart attack. He was hospitalized again for heart difficulties later that September, and in 2006 he was transferred to the Opera Jail in Milan due to cardiac troubles. Rina's lawyers asked the Bologna Surveillance Court in 2017 for the sentence to be deferred to home arrest, citing Rina's frail health. However, the tribunal refused this request. Almost six months later, Rina died in a medically induced coma on November 17, 2017, one day after his 87th birthday. The mafia boss is still famous for his violence and ruthless nature, which earned him the nickname of The Beast. The boss of bosses is widely regarded as the fiercest and nastiest mobster in history. And that's it for today's video. If you found this video interesting and helpful, then make sure to hit the like button and make sure to subscribe. All right. I want to thank um, 
the good folks at Luxury Drop. Let's support them uh, by giving uh, them a sub. Let me drop them a link after the show. If you can kindly go in there. Actually, let me drop the video link and tell them the NBA sent you. And uh, like, subscribe to that video, as well as give Luxury Drop a sub. They are good, um, uh, good people. Um, so this kind of setting up the interview with 